Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on June 13th, 2023, current 1130 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot of things to jump into today, including a June potential tropical cyclone forming out there in the main development region. Is it really going to happen? And a look at the newest system that could be forming in the eastern Pacific. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we notice that there's not too much ongoing currently across the basin. We have a lot of dry, stable air out there, a few mid-latitude cyclones, and a few tropical waves passing through portions of the islands right now. Trinidad and Tobago especially, that's had a lot of heavy rainfall over the last several days. So certainly any dry air is good news for them. Elsewise, though, across the basin, everything is relatively quiet, but the attention is going to be turning to the main development region as we progress throughout the next week or so as a rare June tropical cyclone may form in the main development region. So in the Atlantic Basin, there is currently nothing forecast to develop over the next seven days. So all is pretty quiet across the tropical main development region and across the rest of the Atlantic Basin, which is certainly some good news. I wouldn't be surprised to see an area marked slowly but surely out in this area as we progress throughout the next several days. And I'll talk about why here in just a second. In the tropical eastern Pacific, we do have a system that could end up developing into a tropical cyclone over the next seven days. We got an area of disturbance, disturbance one, marked with a 20% chance of tropical cyclone formation over the next seven days as the system drifts slowly off towards the north and west here. This indicates the potential shading area is an indication of where the storm might track based on my interpretation of the model guidance currently and does not represent an actual track forecast as of now. But generally speaking, this area of low pressure is expected to move generally off towards the west and northwest over the next several days. And eventually, once it starts to get about 120 degrees west here, which is where my cursor is, that will start to encounter very unfavorable conditions in terms of cooler sea surface temperatures and stronger upper level winds, which will lead to the system's demise. But definitely something to watch out here. And we'll talk about more systems that might even develop later in the future. So what we're looking at here, this is the GFS vorticity, the 850 millibar vorticity, or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And also we're looking at the upper level winds at about 25,000 feet indicated by all of these arrows and the text icons. And then overlaid on top of that is the mean sea level pressure. This is starting off today as of early this morning. We notice there's a little bit of vorticity in the intertropical convergence zone associated with a tropical wave that is going to be emerging or is emerged off the coast of Africa today. This is not what we're actually looking at for development. If we go ahead and run this model forward, we notice that in the next several days, there is a tropical wave. We'll go ahead and back this up. This is on the 17th, and the 17th would actually be on a Saturday of this weekend. So by this weekend, there's a tropical wave where my cursor is expected to move off the coast of Africa. Now, I do want to caution that before we go any further, we have to wait to see how the structure of this wave is emerging off the coast of Africa. Tropical waves inherently by nature are not warm core hurricanes, tropical cyclones, depressions, you know, whatever, tropical cyclones in general are warm core in nature. So obviously we're going to need convective processes and other um, mechanisms in the atmosphere to convert this wave into something with, that would be a warm core cyclone. Irregardless, this wave with some background vorticity or cyclonic turning in the lowest part of the atmosphere is present and as this moves over the waters here, very warm waters for this time of the year, enough to support tropical cyclone genesis. And we notice that the upper level winds are not that unfavorable. We're looking at between nine knots of shear there, 10 knots of shear there. And wind shear in this entire area remains generally under 20 knots, which is somewhat conducive for tropical cyclone activity. Certainly when you have wind shear that is on the order of 10 knots or lower, that's definitely enough to support tropical cyclone genesis and maintenance. And eventually within this broad monsoon trough here, this tropical wave does consolidate into somewhat of a tropical cyclone. And this is heading off to the latter part or the early part rather 
of next week. We're looking Sunday going into about Tuesday and Wednesday. And this system does try to consolidate here on the forecast guidance by the 21st into what would be a full-blown tropical uh, cyclone. So we're talking just about a week from tomorrow, next Wednesday, we could be talking about something here in the main development region. Shear remains relatively light across here, and it seems like that pretty favorable moisture content will lead to something, and even the European guidance is picking up on this. So we're going to have to watch to see how this wave emerges off the coast of Africa. Certainly uh, for our friends in the Lesser Antilles, the island chain out here, nothing to worry about even remotely close to right now, but just something to monitor as we go forward in time. I do think that this wave that emerges on all of the forecast guidance will probably have a very favorable pathway to genesis or tropical cyclone genesis that is if indeed this wave comes off as healthy as is what is predicted on the guidance so to better illustrate my point here about the moisture content we're looking at the gfs forecast the precipital water forecast that is and basically simply put here anywhere within the warmer colors especially these reds here this indicates higher precipital water which indicates a higher chance for the atmosphere to be totally saturated through a theoretical column of the atmosphere so what we're looking at here this begins at the 19th at 8 a.m so we're looking here uh, as we progress throughout this weekend and we notice that the tropical wave has already emerged. It's where my cursor is currently. And we notice that there is some bundling of that energy right here. And it is trying to spin up on this northern side, which monsoon troughs generally do this. And so what is going to be expected is that there's going to be a lot of dry air to the north. But look at all of the moisture that is surrounding our disturbance. So if this remains the case, and we'll run this forward, we notice that the disturbance isn't easily entraining that dry air into its moisture envelope here. So you notice that the dry air as this vortex or as the system tilts more from a monsoon trough, kind of south, southwest to north, northeast orientation. So like this, it begins to tilt upright. And we notice, and we've seen from recent research that upright um, kind of stances of these waves or these monsoon troughs are generally more conducive and favorable for tropical cyclone genesis. So we notice that this dry air does get kind of wrapped around on the far northern fringe, but it will not be entrained into this cyclone that tries to develop. And so what ends up happening is we get a somewhat coherent vortex to form within about the next eight to nine days on the forecast guidance. And so this indicates to me that there is at least a theoretical possibility to have this system become at least a tropical depression, if not maybe a brief tropical storm before running into more hostile conditions closer to the Caribbean, because this area is very unfavorable for, you know, because of the time of year that we're, that we're currently in. It's, it's only mid, you know, going into mid June at this point. So this definitely has my attention. It is a possibility heading into early next week. Not something I'd say is extremely likely at this point, but definitely piques my interest because of the fact that this is anomalously favorable conditions for a tropical wave to develop out here. And briefly wrapping up with a quick overview of the Eastern Pacific Basin. This is the GFS 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground again. And we noticed that over the next several days, we might have several tropical cyclones that may form in the Eastern Pacific Basin. None of these are immediately any concern to land, so we will be monitoring this uh, very closely. But we may have several cyclones that end up forming as better environmental conditions set up for tropical cyclone genesis and maintenance out here in the Eastern Pacific Basin. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. God bless. Take care. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next several days.